Although I represent the entire city as an at-large council member, I live in the third district. And one of the issues that I heard about before I even took office was MCI Hospital. Now this sits on a prominent corner that a lot of people see every day, and it had been a blighted eyesore for a long time. Not only was it visually unappealing, but it was dangerous and crumbling down, and there were concerns that it could be housing illegal activity. So the city, city council, city staff, got together and came up with a creative solution. We were able to buy this property and get some much needed office space for power and light. So they're moving into the medical building that was just to the east of the hospital. As part of the terms of sale, the seller agreed to tear down the hospital structure. So now that's gone too. So now what we've got is office space that's being created for power and light and we're going to have green space where the hospital was. That gives us lots of options. We could make a park, we could potentially extend Clothier Park across the street, or we could sell that green space to a business who might want to locate right there on that prominent corner. This is just one of the projects that I'm really proud of as a member of this city council. The Independence Event Center has been called the family room of independence. And with concerts and other events ranging from Barney to B.B. King, it's easy to see why. We're proud to host the Missouri Mavericks, an ECHL hockey league team that has had great success in the last five years and is battling for a playoff spot this year. We also are proud to host the Missouri Comets, an AASL team that is now leading the league with a surprising 18-0 record. By the time you all see this video, hopefully it's 19-0, and on January 22nd, they'll be closing out the season undefeated. If so, please help pack the house on January 22nd. Looking forward to this year, we're going to be having Ariana Grande and Alan Jackson, among many others, at the Independence Event Center. Unfortunately, those two events are already sold out. But it's not too late to get the NAIA Division I Women's National Basketball Tournament on your family's schedule. Hosting this event for the first time in mid-March, Independence is working hard to make this the future home of that prestigious event. We hope you get out and see those 32 teams from around the country as they battle for that prestigious national championship title. The Independence Event Center, check it out. It's surprising what you might find there. I guess I'd like to highlight a, a few projects that really uh, have soared and taken off the ground in the last year. We've cut a ribbon on a clinic in Fairmount that uh, is operated by Trim and Lakewood. We've also cut a ribbon on the Swope Health Center. Uh, those, both of those facilities bringing health services back to Northwestern Independence. Uh, we also had the thrill of opening and uh, seeing the first game of baseball played on our ability field last spring, and we're looking forward to the completion of the uh, uh, park that will uh, make available to our residents with special needs a playground and facilities uh, that are state of the art. At the same time, I think the thing that I think about from in Northwest Independence that I really focus on is sort of like a, the old connect the dot puzzle that we did when we were kids. You can look at a page of paper with a lot of dots on it and maybe get a sense of what the picture is going to be like, but until you really connect one dot to the next, you're not sure what the image is. And right now I see a lot of dots out there and we're beginning to draw lines between the, uh, the people that represent those dots, the organizations, the churches, the schools, the businesses and so on. And we're really seeing folks, particularly in the Fairmount area, come together to revitalize Northwestern Independence. I'm very proud to be a part of 12 Blocks West, uh, to have made a connection also recently with the Independence Ethnics, uh, Ethnic Council, uh, a group of homegrown citizens who have come together of all different ethnicities to support and build Fairmount, and also uh, a, to be introduced to a new church that's planting in the area, the Revive Church. Those three things coming together I think are going to spell uh, wonderful things to come in the coming year and several years in Western Independence. Recently the health department came to us to ask if there was any way we could help them improve their efficiency of their code enforcement inspection process. They were wasting too much time in associating photos that, that, that they were taking on their digital cameras with cases. Our solution was to develop a mobile app that allowed the inspector to quickly take photos and manage them. It's been so successful that it's saved approximately 1,500 hours just last year, leading to more inspections. As a result, we were honored with the Kansas City Business Journal's Impact Award for Improving Efficiency. And moving forward, we will continue to look for ways to improve employee efficiency through using technology. 
It's been a whirlwind of activity since I was elected to the City Council in April, but it's been an exciting time for independence. There's been a lot of things happening, exciting things happening for independence. Uh, first of all, I wanted to mention the renewable energy resolution that we passed as a City Council. It will change the, uh, the direction of energy for independence over the next several decades. Uh, it's the first time in, in a number of years that independence and the City Council have looked at energy policy. So I'm looking forward to uh, independence and IPL growing the percent of renewable energy for the city and also looking forward to seeing the new rate study that they are going to be doing for us. Uh, the other item that, that is exciting to look at is the Newtown Harmony development that the City Council passed the uh, first phase of development for recently and that will change the whole direction of development in eastern Jackson County and bring quite a few new residents over the next several decades as well as businesses to Jackson County. We're happy to have the Stony Brook Inn opening soon in Independence and the Bass Pro development along with a number of other restaurants. So it's an exciting time for Independence and we are on the move. We invite businesses to come to Independence and locate here as well as industry. Thank you. Well, Independence is part of a regional consortium that has been chosen to participate in the Global Cities Initiative Exchange, which is a partnership between the Brookings Institution and J.P. Morgan Chase that will help metropolitan cities from across the United States grow their presence in the global marketplace. Now, we know over the next five years that 79% of global GDP growth will occur outside of the United States. Meanwhile, 40% of job creation comes through firm expansion, but only 5% of U.S. firms are currently using exporting as a key tool for business expansion. So this highly coveted membership will help the leaders of metropolitan America, like Mayor Weir, grow our regional economy and help us have a stronger presence in the global marketplace. It's my pleasure to be here with you today to continue the tradition of presenting the annual State of the City Address to the Independence Chamber of Commerce. I'm not sure how this tradition began, but I'm proud to be the city's 50th mayor and second female mayor to share with you today what's going on in this city that we all love. It's a wonderful t tradition and mayors from across the nation have stood before their community to, uh, to give the state of the city and I'm proud to be included in this group. This afternoon, I want to welcome the residents of Independence, my Mayor Pro Tem, Christopher Whiting, and the city council members who are here today. I'd also like to personally welcome my fellow mayors from around the region and our, our county executive, who I expect to be joining us soon. Your attendance today is representative of the collaboration that is needed for our region and each of our cities to succeed. And our connection to one another is essential for us to achieve our common goals. And I want to thank you for supporting the City of Independence and for your friendship. Finally, I want to introduce the first gentleman of Independence, my husband, Tom Weir. <laughs> I don't know if this is going to work, so I'm not going to hold it. Uh, for my first State of the City address, I want to look forward. Together, this council and our city staff have accomplished great things for our community, but I don't want to spend my time today recalling a list of achievements. I want to involve all of you in what's next. I pride myself on having high standards. I set high expectations, and I make no apology for that. In order for us to achieve greatness, we need to aspire to be great. We cannot settle for less. I believe that the leadership of the city is in the right place at the right time to make decisions and take actions that will significantly impact independence for generations to come. To make our vision a reality, I am committed to making independence smarter, cleaner, and more prosperous. A smart city operates efficiently, and this means utilizing the public resources in ways that are cost and time effective to deliver superior basic services to residents and business owners. The council has embraced newer developing technologies and we are constantly adapting our processes and looking for tools that will help our employees do their jobs better and faster 
and allows citizens to communicate with us quickly and easily. Just two weeks ago, we launched a new city website with improved graphics and functionality. We looked at how, why, when, and where citizens are using our online services. And we created a site that is optimized for mobile devices and puts the most sought after information at the forefront. In the upcoming months, we will be unveiling a new performance measurement dashboard web portal. Portal. The same management analyst is developing this program and will manage it moving forward to ensure that the data is delivered as accurately and objectively as possible. This tool will fundamentally change the way that we, in, that we communicate internally within our city departments and more importantly, how we allow citizens to see what we are doing well and where we need to improve. The performance me measurement program isn't about creating information, but about taking information that already exists within our departments and delivering it to the public in a way that is understandable and relevant. As Hap touched upon earlier, I believe it is the duty of every individual who is invested in independence to participate in educating and training our future workforce. For independence to be a smart 21st century city, we cannot leave this charge solely to our schools, but we must become active partners in planning for the types of careers that will be needed in our city in 10, 20, even 50 years from now. The Ford Next Generation Learning Program, which is being implemented in the Independent School District, calls for this kind of powerful community engagement to prepare students for college and career. Independence is only one of 18 cities across the country to be selected for this innovative program, and each and every one of us here today can contribute to this program's success through student internships and faculty externships in your businesses. And I challenge you to seize this opportunity, not only to share your knowledge and experience, but to fill your company's pipeline. The goals of becoming a cleaner city will be met by improving the appearance of our neighborhoods and commercial districts and continuing our efforts on renewable energy and conservation. We are very proud of the Code Compliance mobile application that was developed this year and it has made a significant impact on our ability to conduct more property inspections and bring those problems into compliance more quickly. Independence residents have told us time and time again that property maintenance is a top priority, second only to public safety. We take those concerns seriously. It's always our goal to assist property owners who are cited for violations to voluntarily bring their home or business into compliance, and we are successful 89% of the time. Our city neighborhood code compliance program which is held in one neighborhood in each of the four council districts annually, improves compliance rates from 46% on the pre-cleanup inspection to 98.6% on the final inspection. This program not only achieves remarkable results, but it builds communities and it builds neighborhood pride. The way our city looks is important. Independence is a city of tremendous pride, and we want our neighborhoods, our parks, streets, and businesses to reflect our high standards. The council is committed to continuing programs that work, like the Neighborhood Code Compliance Program, and developing new programs that will make an immediate and long-lasting impact. Recently, we, the city council approved two new community improvement districts along Nolan Road. These, together, these will fund reinvestment along this main artery and dramatically improve the appearance and accessibility of Nolan Ro Road as soon as this year. Evaluating the feasibility and at, of renewable energy options will continue to be a priority for the City Council in 2015. Independence has been a regional leader in energy conservation and protection of our natural resources. Most notably, Independence was the first city in the nation of more than 100,000 residents to do a 100% conversion to LED streetlights. 
and we were the first city in the Kansas City metropolitan area to adopt stream setback regulations as part of our development code. The formula for making our city more prosperous is simple. Create more employment opportunities that offer good wages and benefits, retain and grow our existing businesses, and provide the education and training that is and will continue to be in demand in the 21st century. Regional collaboration with our neighbors from across the Kansas City metropolitan area is essential to our city's economic growth. Since April, I have been proactively seeking ways to expand our city's presence through participation in a variety of regional initiatives. I believe independence has missed out on opportunities and we need to get in the game of regional economic development and let the region know that we are open for business. Contributing to the Global Cities Initiative Exchange has already reaped rewards. Our ongoing participation will allow independence to add its voice to the regional discussion on how to grow our metropolitan area through exports and foreign direct investment. I'm also pleased to be representing the City of Independence on the Casey Rising Initiative. The Kansas City area is experiencing a slower post-recession economic recovery than peer regions across the country. Median household income is falling. The local supply of educated workers, especially in STEM-related fields, is not meeting demand, and net exports are declining. Casey Rising is a visioning and planning effort supported by the Civic Council of Greater Kansas City, the Kansas City Area Development Council, and the Mid-America Regional Council. It's focused on growing the regional economy, creating high-paying and sustainable jobs, and developing a 21st century business environment across the metropolitan area. By serving on this committee, I will be able to promote the assets of independence, collaborate with business and civic leaders throughout the region, and engage our local citizens and businesses in setting goals of this long-term economic strategy. Independence is uniquely positioned for growth. The completion of the Little Blue, Little Blue Parkway has opened up 38 square miles of land that is primed for development. And by working closely, closely with the EDC, we are taking a thoughtful approach to this development. We have tremendous value to offer. Low taxes, a strong workforce, reliable utilities, and a unified political leadership. While we can continue to seek new investment for all types of development, the City Council is primarily focused on attracting industrial development. This is a very active sector in the Kansas City market, and quite simply, we are missing out on opportunities to bring in jobs and capital investment because we lack the type of buildings that are in demand. By growing our industrial base, we'll attract new, well-paid jobs to the city and gain high load users for our municipal utilities, which will help redistribute the electric rates more equitably. The success of this effort will benefit all of us, and it depends upon a community, a community commitment to our vision. Throughout our history, independence has prided itself on a, its pioneering spirit, a place that celebrates the courageous. From the big dreamers who set westward to seek their fortunes, to Harry S. Truman, who traveled the most unlikely path to the presidency, where he made many of the most difficult and debated decisions of the 20th century, boldness in the face of risk is our inheritance. That spirit still exists here in Independence. The pioneers are, of today are the entrepreneurs, innovators, and inventors that we are cultivating at the Innovation Center Business Incubator. Across our city, our business leaders, civic leaders, schools, and financial institutions are encouraging and supporting new ideas and new ventures. And the Innovation Center is supplying startup businesses with facilities, guidance, and a collaborative environment to generate marketable products and ideas. Ultimately, the success of the incubator will be judged by the quality and quantity of net new businesses created in the City of Independence. To drive that success, 
the City Council and I are collaborating with the EDC and the Innovation Center to chart a course for clients to graduate from the incubator and become productive corporate citizens right here in Independence, contributing to our economic growth. Now is the time for Independence to tell our story as a city that can and does, and does support entrepreneurs and become a destination for innovators from across the region. The state of the city is transforming. In the past 22 months, Independence has seen tremendous change in leadership with new superintendents in three of our four school districts, a new mayor, three new council members, and a new Chamber of Commerce president. Amidst these times of exciting opportunities and new partnerships, I have been frequently inspired by the words of President John F. Kennedy, who in his inaugural address in 1961, challenged the nations of the world to begin anew on a quest for peace. President Kennedy said, all this will not be finished in the first 100 days nor will it be finished in the first 1,000 days, nor in the life of this administration, nor even perhaps in our lifetime on this planet. But let us begin. Together, we are embarking on an aggressive agenda, and our objectives are lofty. These goals will require our focus and our persistence. We will not achieve them quickly, nor without effort, but I invite you to join us and let us begin. Thank you. <laughs>